Um, second um, big problem, I think, from idolizing virginity is it contributes to the myth that virginity equals purity. And so yeah. as long as I'm technically a virgin, I'm good. <laughs> so looking at porn, doing this, doing that. Oh, well, yeah, we went right up to the line, but we didn't cross it. So I've still got my V card, you know, so we're good. So yeah. let me speak to that, how it contributes to that myth that purity is virginity. And as long as you got that intact, you're pretty much yeah. good. Yeah, that kind of makes me laugh because um, I don't know, it, it it's two sides of the coin. If we collapse virtue and the virtue of chastity to just the physical quality of virginity, the sin follows right along with it, right? We collapse sin to only the losing of virginity. And that's just, that's no good for anybody. You know, like I, I don't, um, but yeah, that I encountered that a lot um, just in discussions with my peers throughout high school and college of just kind of the, the definition of what is losing your virginity, you know, and kind of culturally that's still disagreed upon. But if it's if it's everything but the physical losing of it, then we're then we're good. Um, and I, I think, again, like that, that comes with not recognizing the damage that sexual sin does to your heart. Right. And if we root ourselves in the love of God and how he created us and our gift of self, our focus should primarily be on our soul and not on our body. And then as a result of focusing on our soul, our body comes right along with it and we can protect protect that, too. But I think um, I think, yeah, the the virginity equals purity. It, it just doesn't do anybody any good on both sides of the coin. Yeah. Yeah. And it, to me, it's it's the uh, the difference between the words abstinence and chastity. I mean, people yeah, get the words yeah. confused. We're like, well, what's celibacy? What's abstinence? Chastity? Aren't they pretty much the same thing? Well, celibacy is the state of not being married. That's the definition of yes. celibacy. Abstinence is the absence of sex. And so if you told me, you know, Bob is abstinent, it's like, great. I mean, that doesn't really tell you much about Bob. I mean, Bob could be a virtuous man. Bob could be unable to find a date. Bob could have died 300 years ago. Like, yes. we really have no idea. It does, it's just the absence of something, whereas chastity is the presence of that virtue of chastity that, you know, has to do with integrates our, our speech, the way we dress, the way we dance, you know, physical affection, the modesty of our intentions, the whole human person. And I think because oftentimes in evangelical circles, they lacked a deeper theology of sexuality of what yeah. is the purpose and meaning of human sexuality? How is it the wedding vows made flesh and the, the pro procreation and union? It was lacking a historical theology of sex. And as a result, you know, what they had was abstinence. And, you know, this is the goal. We got to keep abstinence. And yes, you should strive for purity. But what that means is debatable. Like, is masturbation OK? Well, what about this? What about that? I mean, you even yeah. had, you know, very big, well-known Christian leaders who couldn't come down clear on topics like masturbation or, or contraceptions because they lacked that theology of sex. And what they were left with was the message of just general abstinence. And as well, what's the focus of abstinence? Virginity. And so we've got to get back to the theological underpinnings of the beauty of God's plan for human sexuality to see the big picture. Yeah, and that was that was another goal in the article. And, and some of the, um, the feedback that it got was really interesting because people took uh, you read one of the quotes at the beginning about how, the yeah, I said something about the greatest gift you can give in a marriage is you. And some people took that at face value and were really upset. They're like, are you bashing virginity? Are you are you saying it doesn't matter? And I was like, well, read the whole article. <laughs> what I'm trying to point out is that um, our theology of sexuality as Catholics is so robust. It is so full. Um, like John Paul II's Theology of the Body is just such an, a, like an amazing anthropological work. It's not just about sex, right? Um, and I think that's, that's the goal now, uh, to move away from purity culture is take people deeper, not change the narrative. And I think, um, I think it's helping people see like the truth hasn't changed. Like what is, what is sin is still sin, right? Um, we don't have to become more liberal in our understanding of sin, but rather, um, what a certain generation goes through or continues to go through is different than the past. And so we have to change the way the truth is articulated. But we're always uh, we're always called to take people deeper into into the understanding of that truth. Yeah, no, good, good points. And I, and I need to add to it, you know, as I mentioned those things regarding evangelical Christianity, I, I don't want to come across as, hey, Protestants got it wrong. Us Catholics <laughs> got it right. So you just no. I mean, we've got a lot to learn from them in terms of their evangelical yeah. zeal and how much they were on the front lines battling this promiscuity culture oh, yeah. in the 90s. Oh, yeah. It's almost as, you know, Catholics tend to invest so much of the pro-life 
movement, whereas I think evangelicals are really moving into the front of abstinence. But you know, there's so much more I think we can do together. And I think even them, they're starting to adopt more of the language of chastity now. Because, I mean, books are being written against purity culture. People who grew up in that are rebelling against mm-hmm. it, rejecting it. And so if our, our third point was this idea that as long as I'm a virgin, I'm pure. I think the third point uh, is kind of the inversion of that, where... It, it contributes to the myth that the absence of virginity equals the absence of purity. In other words, like, yeah. look, once it's gone, it's gone and it's over. And well, psh, I've yeah. already lost my virginity. What's the point of waiting for marriage now? Once that's gone, if I've slept yeah. with one guy, is two that much of a difference or three? It doesn't matter. The virginity is gone. And so to me, it leads to that despair of thinking that if you're not a virgin, you can't be pure. Yeah, and I, I encounter this a lot um, just working with women who are addicted to porn and masturbation, and I encountered that in my own struggle against addiction, but um, that's exactly how the enemy keeps you trapped, is like, you've gone there, you don't deserve anything better, so just keep going there. That's all you're ever going to get. Um, and I had a friend in particular who really struggled with with uh, with that uh, kind of hookup culture in her own life, and that was something she actually said to me like through a, like a lot of tears, is she was like, I can't do anything different. I'm not worth anything more than this. Like, how do I do anything different? Um, and so that's the question of a lot of women and and men who have lost their virginity is how how am I supposed to do anything different now? Um, but I think also it again that that doesn't do justice to redemption or conversion. I. I've known women who uh, and men who lose their virginity and come back from it so convicted about the beauty of their sexuality and how to save sex for marriage that they have some of the most thriving, wonderful relationships while they're dating and in marriage because of that renewed conviction um, kind of, you know, on the on the opposite. And you have people who think, yeah, kind of what we talked about before, but that virginity equals purity. And so they sexually struggle with porn or masturbation or many other things, but they have their virginity, so it's fine, but they encounter the lack of healthy sexuality in their own life. Um, so I think I think to say once it's lost, it's gone, like that that doesn't do justice to redemption and conversion and, and what a renewed fire of conviction can do for your life. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message, and there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day, and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at Patreon dot com slash Jason Everett that helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.